the guide on this one, Maxie. It's the Ducks Guts. Yeah, she's a little... Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Hope you liked that bit of an intro there. For all the petrol heads out there, that scene in Australian cinema, it goes down in history and it seed, plants a little seed for all of you guys and girls that are enamored with superchargers, that wine, that power. And I tell you what, after you see that scene, you want to go get a supercharger. So if you've got a Commodore, this episode's for you because I'm going to take you through all the steps and all the options to supercharge your Commodore. Check this out. So if you're watching this video, you've probably seen our earlier videos on our modifications to your Commodore. You know, less than $1,000 mods, mods from 2000 to 10000 And this video is around, if you've done all those mods, and now you want to really step up your game and go forced induction, and more specifically head down a supercharger route, what are your options? Because I'll tell you what, I was faced with all these options myself, and um, I thought, given the decisions I had to make, and uh, the options I had in front of me, I thought I'd share with you guys. So the first thing you've got to choose is... Based on your budget, what direction do you go? And the two biggest paths for supercharge applications to upgrade your Commodore are, do you go with a bolt-on onto your existing engine and put a supercharger on top or on the side, we'll talk about that, or do you bite the bullet and go a fully built motor with a crate engine as well as an option and actually have the supercharger as part of that package as well. Lots of pros and cons, let's talk about it. All right, so let's start with the first option we just talked about, and that is a bolt-on blower. Uh, and they come in two uh, sort of different variations. One is a top mount, and one is a side mount or a centrifugal um, bl blower that we'll talk about as well. Starting with the, uh, the top mounts, you've got a couple of different manufacturers that are the mainstream ones here in Australia. So there are Harrop, I've got personal experience with two of their models. Um, and their latest model design is uh, FDFI, it's this front drive front inlet design that you'll see with the big blower pulley at the, uh, the front of the motor um, and they come in two different main sizes um, two, 2300 which is 2.3 litre positive displacement or 2650 which is their latest uh, big blower um, that they make and we, we've actually bought two of those um, and they're a fantastic blower um, a lot of these uh, latest manufacturers they use the Eaton twin screw rotating design uh, and they, those internal components are typically you find with a number of the other blowers that we'll talk about as well. Uh, Magnuson, their Heartbeat series, um, we'll show pictures as we're talking here. Uh, they're another you know, very popular blower, probably more popular in the US than here in Australia, but there's a number of seriously capable cars getting around here in Australia with that Magnuson blower. Um, they look amazing as well. They've got you know, quite an interesting intercooler design uh, and all these fit underneath the, uh, the bonnet and maintain pretty much an OEM look to your car, really, um, until, uh, until someone gets to hear the wine, uh, a bit like Mad Max there. The big blowers we find in Australia um, are by uh, Whipple, um, and they're starting to get up in the 2.9, 3.4 litre territory. Now, they're, they're a great blower, they're big, um, but typically, you know, you can't hide them under, the, under your bonnet, you've got to have a hole in your bonnet, uh, but also, that they're probably more on the, the rare end of the spectrum when you see mainstream cars getting around out there. Um, the one that we see the most of is, is probably the Harrop. Um, and that's because a lot of the, um, you know, whether it be the Walkinshaw Harrop dealers that you see around, that seems to be the mainstream blower that a lot of people use. I've got all the links in the description below for all these different manufacturers. Um, and as I mentioned, we've had personal experience with the two Harrop items. Um, sort of power increase on, on a bolt-on, um, you know, either 6 litre or 6.2, anywhere between 4, 450, up to 500 rear wheel kilowatts with a positive displacement blower. And that's pretty good. You know, and that's obviously with the tune and all the other mods we've been talking about, but not necessarily a cam or heads. So they're pretty good. And these top mount blowers, you know, pretty reliable um, and a lot of them come with big warranties and that as well and um, yeah for the ones that we've had we've had no dramas. The next uh, supercharger design that you'll often see and they're more popular in the US is more of the side mount centrifugal blowers and uh, hey, Cletus has got one on his late model Corvette as well I think it's a pro charger from memory um, and you know there's a couple of different manufacturers here in Australia 
but typically you find if people go with a side mount or a turbo style supercharged blower, they actually end up going um, turbocharged anyways. So it's um, probably you know, at the less common end on the spectrum in terms of the types of superchargers that we see out there. They're still super capable. And in fact, the first time I saw one was at a, uh, a shop that I used to get my Tirana fixed at. And this was a, one of the early model club sports. So it was VR or um, from memory. And it was this dark bottle green color. And this guy had this centrifugal blower on it. And holy dolly. It used to do 270 down the main street of Mitchell. It was, it was something pretty special. And I remember Frankie and I just oogling over it. Just you know, thinking back to Mad Max and thinking that to have a supercharger, you used to have to have this big 671 thing sticking out the top of the blower, the bonnet, and um, but this thing was like this little this little snail. Um, it was pretty cool, and um, yeah, he was the he was the king of the kids that guy. But um, and apparently that that car's still getting around somewhere. So if you see it, that's what it is. So lots of advantages of the top mount blower. You get to retain your standard engine. You don't need to change your slugs or anything like that. You might need to start looking at a different fuel system. You definitely need a, a new tune. Um, and you know, obviously you're going to be pumping a heap more air into the engine under boost. It's time you've got to match that with your fuels. Well, that's where the fuel system comes in. But apart from that, it's a pretty, it's a pretty cool way of getting some serious horsepower. And so budget wise, you know, you're probably looking anywhere from 10 to 16. You know, so this is not cheap change. Um, but when you look at all the other mods that people do in terms of bang for buck, it's not bad. Okay, so just say a bolt-on supercharger is not your thing, you've got deep pockets and you want to go all out, well, this whole new set of avenues starts opening up for you. And that is either you go a fully built motor and put a supercharger on that, um, we'll probably park that option because that's, you know, we're talking fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 there. The more common route is that you get a crate General Motors engine that actually comes out with a supercharger. Now, this is a pretty cool option here. Now, the reason this is pretty cool is that the LSA, which is the 6.2 litre supercharged 1900 blower that comes out with the VF uh, GTS, also the Cadillac in the US, that's a seriously capable engine. And um, we've done a, uh, a friend of ours has done a um, LSA conversion on a VF, on a red line. Have a look at this. So that's a wild bit of kit, that red line, and um, it's also had some cam work and stuff done to it too. But that car since been sold, but you know, that, that was a seriously capable. 550 rear wheel kilowatts on E85 on that LSA conversion, and it still had a heap more left in it too. So that's an option. Go to Hallmart or go to Eagle, go get yourself an LSA. Have a look at some of the prices that we've got in the, in the description below. If that does, doesn't tickle your fancy, you can start stepping up the game a little bit now. The Camaro's come out with the LT4, um, and pretty serious engine, again, 6.2 litre in displacement, but it comes out with a 1700 blower, so a little, a little baby little fella. But the reason that's so cool is that it's super efficient, you can run more boost, um, and these, um, these next generation um, you know, LT series Chevrolets, the, all the fruit, oil squirters, amazing components in the heads and the rods, they are, they are exquisite, but you pay for it. Have a look at the price that we've got down there that we've got from the internet. Up the far end of the spectrum, you go the LS9 W1 territory here. Now this is extreme performance. Um, it's probably on par with actually getting a built motor, if I'm honest. But again, it's the 6.2. You get the 2300 blower, all the Eaton spec, um, low compression compistors, you know, 9.1 to 1s. That means you can start jamming a heap more boost into it, but you pay for it. Um, and then you've got the far end of the spectrum that I mentioned, and that's what something like uh, Young Fred's done here. And you actually buy the displacement of the engine that you want, in our case, 7 litre, 427. And then you go find the dirtiest, biggest supercharger you can find. We went 2650. And then you've got what Chevrolet um, Super Chevy magazine refer to as the Frankenstein. Um, and have a listen to this. YouTube so I hope you enjoyed that there's quite a few options here if you want to supercharge your car it's not as simple as just you know finding the first one you see you've got to have a fairly deliberate approach what outcome you want to get to what power level you want to hit and therefore what options start opening themselves up and if I'm honest that these crate engines particularly in LSA 
you can't go wrong. Um, they're not making a huge amount of more of them, so the crate engines that are out there try and snap them up. And I remember Frankie and I were looking at LSAs recently. They were 12, 12 and a half. They're now like 25 with a transmission. So the prices keep going up, um, but they are a serious bit of kit. And if if we ever sort of, after we do the built motor on the six liter, on the, on the ute, we might go looking at getting a crate LSA or something like that. Um, but we probably won't end up doing a blown seven liter again because that's one of a kind. That was a W427 block that we managed to pick up. On that note, don't do it for Dale. Hope this was useful. Catch you later.